Hi, it's me Jazzy. I'm back with another tech related video and today it's part two of the 6J1 valve amp kit. It's been really, really popular this kit. I've had loads of comments and emails from viewers about this kit. I've had one viewer sent me a parts list, which was very handy. And another viewer that sent me a really lovely schematic drawing done on a CAD program. So thank you very much for that. That's awesome. Clearly a lot of effort gone into that. It's really lovely to see. So what we're going to do today is we're going to build the acrylic case to put the 6J1 valve amp kit in and we're going to power it up and give it a test. Let's see what it can do. So let's get the case on the bench and get it put together. OK, let's have a look at our little case then. Let's have a look. There's more standoffs in here. It should be fairly self-explanatory, you would hope. It's obviously going to be the top because your valves are going to go through there. So I am presuming it's got to go much like that. And I guess we can just reference the photograph of the finished kit on the Amazon page. So it looks to me through a process of deduction that our kit is going to sit something like that, presumably on these standoffs here. And then this is clearly going to be the back. So that has to go that way around. So that sits like that. And then that will sit with the volume control at the front there. OK, it's all fairly simple. And I like the fact they just slot in. So if you do get it wrong, you can easily reposition them. Now, at first glance, when I first had one of these acrylic kits, I panicked and thought they would perhaps sent me the wooden version. But no, it is clear acrylic. You just have to peel these protective pieces off. So let's move our valve amp out the way. Now, there may be more efficient ways of getting these peels off please feel free to let me know in the comments below. I tend to use a flat bladed screwdriver very carefully just to get the very corner up and then peel it off. And if you're lucky, then it will come off in one piece. If you're not, then you're going to have all kinds of little odd bits that need peeling off afterwards and sometimes they're good this one's behaving sometimes the ones that have cutouts tend to leave little tiny bits behind there we go that's half so it's still not apparent that that's actually clear acrylic so let's take the other side off there we go it's the easiest way I could find to get these started. You've got your nice clear acrylic case. So now all we have to do is do that with the other pieces. Thankfully, there's not too many pieces to this case. So as usual, I've just speeded up all the boring bits of me removing all the peel from these multiple pieces of the case. It's a bit of a fiddly job, but once it's done, we're ready to put the bits together. Okay, that's all our pieces. Short standoffs go under the PCB, and the taller ones go on top. Now, let's see what we've got in here. Got some lovely standoffs. So, all we've got to do is screw these small standoffs. Literally, all I've done is just look at a photo on Amazon of the assembled kit, which is the same photo I put up in the video where I built the kit. So on the case construction front, I'm pretty much winging it. But I think we'll be all right. It's pretty simple by the look of it. So that sits on here. And then these 
just go on the top. Well, so far so good, okay. Obviously we haven't tested this yet, so I have confidence that it'll work. Now, I believe this just sits on here. So here's our front panel for the volume. Seems to go that way up by the look of it. And then the back one, we worked out that we had pair, pair and single. I think because of the spacing, because there's more space there than there is there. So I'm guessing those are the pairs. Yeah, that seems to fit. Okay, let's just pop the side on and oh. Okay, I thought it was all going too well. That's not fitting. I think I see the problem, viewers. This should have been snapped off, this board here. Look, there's a groove here. And they've not snapped it off. That is why... No matter which way around you put this, it's going to clear this side, but it won't clear this side. So I think I'm going to go along the board rather than nibble at it. There we go. Just another assembly problem that hopefully you won't have at home if you build one of these. I must have got an unlucky one, I think. So now we know. That should, in theory, sit on there quite nicely. Right, let's go again, shall we? These little builds, they don't always go quite to plan. Acrylic cases are not always the best possible solution. It's the old Heath kit days where you could get a case that actually looked like something. So you can see with the volume control, you've got to get this the right way around, otherwise it's going to be off center. It's going to have to go like that. It really is becoming like a jigsaw puzzle now. Now, here we go. That's good. Now we can get the sides on. Yeah. That's looking a bit more like it, isn't it? There we go. Now, just the top panel to go on. There we go. Four screws to go in the top, and I think that is done. Well, it looks like the picture on the listing. So I think we've done a good job. Okay, so finishing touch will be the volume control. And then I'm going to bring over my AC bench power supply. We're going to need to set up some sort of current limiting. Just because we don't really know what this little amp is going to do. Click on volume max back down and it clicks and there we go perfect happy with that right let's get the bench ac power supply and set up some current limiting okay so a couple of things we need to test our little valve amp kit we need a power supply obviously my bench power supply is no good because it's dc and this requires 12 volts ac so what i've got here is a good old Irwin power supply so this has got uh, not only a dc out it's got an ac out as well it's a pretty simple animal this i've got a choice of two four six eight or twelve volts I'm just going to put it on 12 volts. I'm going to put a meter on here. We're also going to limit the current as well. So for that, we're going to use a dim bulb limiter. And this is my 12 volt version. It's just made out of a couple of car bulbs. Nothing fancy, but it'll do the job. So if something goes short, then this lights up and it will protect this from further damage. The next thing I'm going to need is I'm going to need to find a socket that will fit this. I'm going to connect this up to the dim bulb limiter and we'll hook this up to the power supply. Okay, here we go. So it's a little bit of a lash up, but it's okay for our first test because I haven't powered this amp up yet. And I'm not quite sure what it's going to do. So I'm going to protect it with my 12 volt dim bulb limiter. So we're running this off the Irwin AC power supply. Now I know this is slightly over, so it puts out slightly more than 12 volts when it's on 12 volts. So, but it's the only power supply I've got with an AC out. So this is gonna do the job quite nicely. 
So I've got my dim bulb limiter in series and I've put my meter across the load here so we can see how much voltage is coming through. So a little bit of a lash up, but we know this is going to limit the current to 325 milliamps if anything goes wrong, which I know because I've tested the dim bulb limiter. So let's give it its first ever power on and see what happens, shall we? Are we ready for this? Switching on the mains. Okay, power's going in. 13.9 volts. Right, let's turn it on. Little glow from the bulbs as the caps charge up for the first time. There we go. We've got our little glow from the LEDs. It's not too OTT, is it? There's a little bit of flicker on the camera. That's just the camera picking that up. They're not flickering to my eyes. Okay, that's great. First test. Lovely. Let's turn that off. There we go. Switch off there. Now we know we can do away with the dim bulb limiter. We know the kit's okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to hook it up to the signal generator and the scope, put a signal in, and we can have a look at what's going in and what's coming out. And then we'll try and put some music through it. Okay, so I'm going to plug some test leads into the phono socket of the valve amp and switch my scope on. Let's find a BNC cable. Pop that on channel one. That'll do nicely. Okay. And power into the valve amp and plug into the AC outlet of my power supply. Right, we're almost good to go. I'm going to use the Marconi oscillator for this. Power on, put an adapter in, and BNC cable. Great, we're good to go. Okay, so I've taken the dim bulb limiter out of the circuit. I've now just got the AC power going straight to our little valve amp kit here. Now, I have a signal coming from the Marconi. So let's firstly turn the mains on. Okay, so we know we've got a signal going in. So let's switch the little valve amp on. And we've got something. Turn the volume up a little bit, a little bit more. Okay, there we go. Okay, we've got a nice signal coming out. That's pretty good. So let's see, how far can we go before we get any distortion? There we go, uh, about there. So it's about the halfway point on the volume. You go beyond the halfway, you can see it starts to flatten off at the top there. That's full volume. Then we go down until we get a nice sine wave there. That's about half volume. Okay, let's swap channels. Okay. Yep, there we go. Same again. Cool. Okay, so I've brought over some speakers. I'm using these. These are my M-Audio BX5s. I'm using these because these are my studio monitor speakers, so I'm familiar with how they should sound. I use them all the time when I'm doing mixing and stuff. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the little one me box because it's just really rather convenient, and I'm going to play a track through the speakers first of all, without using the valve amp. So this is just connected directly to the M-Audio speakers. Okay, I can't play you any copyrighted music. I'm gonna use the Crab Rave track as is traditional. Okay, so that sounds great. Sounds exactly like I would expect it to sound through these speakers. So now what I need to do is to hook up our little valve amp kit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plug the one me into the valve amp. Now we know that this one is the input. It's going to go to my M-Audio speakers. Fantastic. Okay, now I've had to move my bench power supply off the bench because I'm running out of room. I should have used the bigger bench for this experiment, but it's full of Pioneer Hi-Fi currently. I'm going to turn the mains on. Lovely. And then we turn the valve amp on. 
a little bit of a hum through the speakers. I don't know if you can hear that. Okay. And then I'm going to play the same track. Okay. I mean, it's not bad for what it is. I wasn't expecting earth-shattering audio quality from it. It's definitely, it, it kind of muddies the sound slightly from not having it in the loop. Now, I've also noted during testing that you can see this valve glowing. This one has died, so I'm now down to just one channel. I'm going to swap the valves over, see if it's a fault in the circuit or is it the valve power off. Could be this valve. We had trouble with this valve, didn't we? Okay, so yeah, you can see that I've swapped the valves over. This one's glowing nicely. Now this one isn't. So this one, which I think is the one that suffered the bent pins, has just died on me. So unfortunately, that's the end of testing with this little kit. Definitely got room for improvement. I think by replacing both the valves with something slightly better quality, I think we can get a little bit more out of it. So maybe this is due a follow-up at some point. But for now, unfortunately, that's put an end to my testing because I'm only getting one channel. What a shame. Whether it was the bent pins or whether it was just a dud valve or whether it had been shook about in that quite poor packaging, who knows. But the amp works. We know the circuitry works because he swapped the valve over and we've only got one working valve. What a shame. Well, that certainly put a bit of an end to my testing. It's not been a smooth ride with this kit, has it? You can see, if you look at the valve, look at this one, you can see this is the failed valve here. So what I'm going to do, I will do a part three to this, and we're going to get some replacement valves and some other bits and bobs. I might upgrade the caps and stuff. So do let me know in the comments down below what you've done to upgrade your kits. Have you got any specific valves that you'd recommend that I get or any other components that you'd swap out to improve the sound of this kit? It's not like I'm going to use it as part of my hi-fi, but I just think it's a bit of fun finding out. I'd like to do a little bit more testing with it as well. So I think replacing those valves and any other bits that I think might need upgrading, then we'll give it another go. Third time lucky, they say. So episode three, when I've got some spare parts, we'll take a revisit at this kit. So I hope you've enjoyed putting together this kit with me and testing it. It has been quite the journey, hasn't it? Many thanks to everyone for watching, sharing, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Always love seeing your comments and your useful suggestions. I'll be back soon with some more tech-related videos, including some test gear repairs, audio repairs, and some more cool electronics kits. In the meantime, take care, and I'll see you on the next one.